Hello and welcome to this video. I'm a photographer and today I'm interested in testing the iPhone 15 Pro. How good are the raw photos that we get from it? How much details do they have? And I'm gonna push them a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna test different situations like landscape photography and if you are out with your friends and taking photos of them. So let's waste no time and go and test it. So now I'm in front of the computer and I have the photos that I've taken in front of me and one interesting thing is the size of the raw files here. As we can see, they go up to 100 megabytes. That's a lot. That's actually a lot. In my Sony camera, I get 30 megabytes and they contain enough information, in my opinion. So what's interesting about the iPhone 15 Pro to have 100 megabytes of ah, information? Uh, some of them have uh, 21, 23, but these are from the third camera and they don't have as much uh, resolution as the other one that's why they are smaller in size now let's take an example of a scene that i've taken three photos of at 1x and 2x and 3x zoom levels and let's see the difference between them first we notice that the file size is different uh, 1x have 73 megabytes and the 2x has 21 megabytes and 3x has 22 megabytes this is 1x this is 2x uh, this is 3x. Let's now zoom in and see the details. Which one is better? At 1x we can zoom in and we can see that it has good level of details. It is sharp enough. With 2x we can already see that it has some noise and not much sharpness. And the quality is not as good as the 1x. We can see some weird things like the light of the car there. It seems like the photo had some noise and then there's some noise reduction applied to it. And then we have 3x. We can see that it has some noise there, even though we didn't zoom enough. We can see that the colors on the left are kind of merged together. I'm not sure if this comparison was visible in a YouTube video, but to me, I was able to see that the 1X had better quality than the 2X and the 3X, and it's kind of the only one that I can rely on if I want to do professional photography. And now in front of me, I have a photo that I've taken with 1X. We can see that it has good amount of details, and let's try to edit it. First, let's see how much information we can get out of these shadows. Uh, raw files should have enough information in the shadows so we can bring them up let's see before and after this was nice actually let's try to edit the colors let me try to make the yellow a bit orangey let's try to edit the blue color nice Let's give it a bit of sunset vibes. Let's increase the saturation of the photo. As you saw, we were able to bring some details from the shadows, which is good. And that's what raw files should include. They should have more information so you have the ability to edit. And then we saw that the colors were actually uh, separated nicely in the photo and we were able to edit each color individually and get nice results. So I'm happy with this one. Now let's test a more common situation which is when you go out with friends and you take a photo of them and you're trying to do something nice for them and edit the photo and impress them with your editing skills. So let's see here. I actually went out with my friends and took some photos. So here we have a photo of Annika and Lamia. We went out, it was a sunny day and uh, uh, Lamia here is laughing, Annika is talking, so it's really nice. Let's see how can we edit this photo. First thing I noticed that is Lamia is in the shade a little bit. We cannot see her very well. So let's try to brighten her up a little bit. Let's do, let's do a local adjustment here and increase the shadows. Let's then play a little bit with the colors, make them a little bit more warm. And play a little bit with the blue color. Then what I like to do is to emphasize that there is some sun by giving it a light beam coming from the direction of the sun. And decrease the dehaze, giving it some haze. 
and giving it a bit of warm color. Then let's see how well Lightroom will detect that there is people in the image by select people. As we can see, it has detected multiple people in the image. Let's select Annika and Lamia. And then we can select the facial scan and the body scan. And then we can brighten up the skin a little bit and reduce the texture and the clarity to give softer skin. Then let's play around a little bit. And that's it, before and after. Here we can see that the photos you will take of your friends or your nice moments have enough information to edit the colors and to select each individual uh, body feature and then edit it very nicely. And I think this is more than enough. You can take photos of your friends and press them with your editing skills and make them happy. So what if you want to take photos of wildlife or uh, nature? I think it is possible if the subject that you're interested in is not far away or you are interested in the whole scene but if you need to zoom in to focus on one subject then it's not gonna be a very good photo because you're gonna need to use the zoom lens and as we said only the 1x zoom level is what gives you professional quality. As we can see here I've taken this photo in two zoom levels and the one with more zoom I think it was 2x or 3x as we can see it has a lot of noise even though it was a bright uh, sunny day and we can see the sky here it has a lot of noise uh, while the other one 1x it was really nice the sky was clear there is no noise so it's really nice uh, I'm lucky with this situation because I'm not interested in only one bird I'm interested in the whole scene so let's try to edit this photo here what I like is the blue color I think we can play around with it we can change it as we can see here but this time I'm gonna do something that I don't do often which is to make this photo black and white photo so we make it first black and white and then we go down to editing each color individually and I'm gonna make the blue color darker and as we can see the sky is becoming darker and then we can see the birds more and there is a higher contrast now but down in the photo we can see that there is a bright light coming from below so let's adjust that a little bit with linear gradient make it darker and then adjust the gradient and as we can see now it's beautiful we can see the separation between the foreground and the background there is high contrast between the birds and the sky I'm happy with this. So what do I think about this iPhone 15 Pro as a photography tool? I think it, if you are a professional photographer and you are interested in landscape photography, this can be good enough for you in cases that you don't carry your camera. But if you're interested in zooming in on things or other types of uh, other styles of photography then it can be limiting for you because you can't zoom in and get high quality photos but if you are a beginner or just interested in learning photography this is a really good camera for you to start with another thing that's important is the size of the photos it fills your memory very quickly and that's not good so don't take always raw photos test and play around and then decide for yourself so thanks for watching and let me know in the comments if there is something that you want me to test and subscribe.